Hey guys, in this video we're going to take a look at Fume Effects 5 and how to create some fire and smoke as well as the general UI and how to tune our fire and smoke to get a nice looking simulation. Now the first thing you'll notice is we have a nice Fume Effects toolbar at the top. In this toolbar we can create Fume Effects sources as well as collision objects and start and stop our simulation. To get started, we're just going to click on Create Fume Effects. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring up the main Fume Effects UI in the Attribute Editor, and it's going to create a volume grid. Now, this volume grid is where all the Fume Effects action is going to happen. Any fluid dynamics we want is going to be contained inside this grid. So whether it's a candle flame or a large explosion, we want to make this grid about the size of our effect. And you can do this over here under General Parameters. So we can change the width and the length and then maybe we'll go back and just kind of change it back. The other important thing about this grid is going to be the spacing. The spacing is basically the resolution of the grid. So if I make this much bigger, like 10, we're going to see this little large cube in the corner of our grid. And this is an indicator of the resolution that we're going to simulate at, and this would be way too low resolution. The starting size of 1 is usually pretty good, but you may have to bring it down to 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.1 to get better resolution and higher quality simulations. Let's take a look at the other rollouts we have. You can see we have a lot kind of going on here and we're going to go through uh, each one of them. So in general parameters we have all the basics like the size and spacing, things about the outputter here, and here's our cache paths and the playback options. Now we also have some important stuff in simulation. Here you might have the quality and uh, the way that the simulation is going to progress. We have some gravity, things like vorticity, and even turbulence is in here. Now we also have things like what we're going to simulate, like smoke, fire, and the parameters to adjust those things. Under that we have wavelet turbulence. And this is a great tab. It allows us to do a secondary simulation to upper resolution and our quality and get a little bit more detail out of our simulation. And we have post-processing, which will allow us to get our cache sizes down after we've created our simulation. Over in render settings, we have things like the render quality and you know the color of your fire, maybe the opacity, and this is where the general overall look of your smoke and fire is going to come into play. Now, if we want to pick some lights or sources, we have our Relationship Manager. So in the Fume Effects Relationship Manager, this is where you can pick our lights, our sources, and other collision type objects. So all of those things can happen in this one place. Right now, we don't have anything to emit any fluids into our volume grid. So that's the first thing we want to do. First we can go up to the toolbar and I can choose simple source. Then we can go over into the relationship editor and just launch that. And in the relationship editor we can select that simple source. Now another way we can do this is if we just delete this simple source and we have our fume effects grid selected. Now when we create a simple source it will automatically be associated with the fume effects grid. So if I select the Fume Effects Grid and go over to that Relationship Editor, you can see it's already in there and already selected. This can be a quick way to add sources to our Fume Effects Grid without having to go through too many dialogues. Now we can click Simulate and you can see that we'll get smoke and fire in the scene and we can watch this simulate through. Now one thing we might notice is this is a little bit smooth and that's because some of the defaults for Fume Effects 5 kind of produce a bit of a smoother result. What we'll do is we're going to go into the simulation turn down over in the attribute editor and we're going to adjust some parameters for the vorticity. So under simulation let's go into the system turn down here and we're going to change the vorticity type to vorticity 2 and then we're going to set the vorticity strength to be about 0.9. These are actually the new defaults that will ship with a point release for Fume Effects 5 and we can kind of take a look at the difference here. So let's press simulate and you can see we're getting a lot more swirling and curling and just detail to our simulation. So this is maybe more like you would expect to get a fire and smoke simulation and those are good defaults to kind of start with. And once we're done simulating we can click render 
And you can see that we have our fire rendering, but not our smoke quite yet. In order to see our smoke, we're going to have to go grab a light. So we'll go over to the Arnold rendering tab and we'll click on an area light. Once we have that light in the scene, we'll move it up a bit and scale it out some and move it into place. We'll also want to adjust the exposure a bit and we'll make sure that it's assigned in the relationship manager. Let's open up the Arnold render view and we can press play for an iterative feedback. Now when we select our light and we start to adjust the exposure a bit, we can start to see the smoke coming into play. We can even scrub the timeline and see it update in the render view. We'll stop that rendering and close the render window. And now we're going to take a look at some of the viewport parameters for our smoke and fire. If we scroll down to the viewport section, we can see we have a few options here. First one is just to enable the viewport data display. And then we have options for our channels. Uh, you can see that we can show the smoke or the fire, and you can turn those on or off. Now, if we click away from our grid in the viewport, you can see that our viewport display turns off, but we can use this display always option. Now we can also uncheck enable transparency, and we can adjust things like reducing the quality and the size. This will make it a little less taxing on our viewport if we need that speed and we are seeing a little bit of the lag. I do like the enable transparency though, so we'll check it back on. As we scroll down, you can see we have a few more channels that we can check, and we might look at those a little bit later when talking about channels. We can also turn on show slice, and this will show just a slice of the grid. We can set the slice position maybe somewhere in the middle and adjust the thickness so that we can see just a portion of the smoke and fire that we have. And this can be pretty handy. We can set it per axis so we can change the axes around and maybe even make a little thinner slice or adjust that position again if we just want to look at a particular portion of that grid. We'll just turn off show slice and if we want even better feedback right in the viewport we can click on enable GPU display. This gives a very nice quality GPU display of our smoke and fire that's getting really close to what we'll see in the renderer. We'll turn off hide grid for now because the next thing we're going to look at is adjusting a few of the grid parameters. In general parameters we have some other options we can look at. One is for the adaptive grid. If we check adaptive grid on then what we can do is pick one of these boundaries and allow the grid to expand past our original width and length. So we can choose what axis we would like it to expand on. You can see that right now when we get to the top of the grid our smoke is getting cut off and that's not something we would really want especially if we spent a lot of time simulating. So we can go to the boundless parameters and we can choose that we would like it to be boundless on plus y which will be the top and then when we press simulate what will happen is you can see this purplish blue grid which is our adaptive grid and once that gets to the top it's going to actually be able to expand out of the plus y grid parameter this way we won't get any cut off smoke and it'll continue to simulate past our original length and width here you can see we've gotten to the top and the smoke is breaking through the top and still simulating not getting cut off. We can also adjust the sensitivity of how we want this adaptive grid to work. So if we choose something like velocity and fields, we'll have more sensitivity in the grid. So you can see it's expanding much more and that may take a little bit more time to simulate, but it also gives us a little more flexibility. So we'll just stop that. And for instance, maybe if we wanted to choose the fire as a sensitivity indicator or threshold, we could press play and only where there is fire is where the grid is going to be adaptive and cut off. Here you can see that the grid is cutting off at the top where we don't really have any more fire and it's just some smoke. The next thing I want to talk about a bit was the spacing and this little indicator of what the spacing is going to do. So when we adjust it down to maybe 0.5 or 0.25, you can see that the size of the files are changing, and this is based on the overall resolution. That's important because, you know, we can only use so much RAM to simulate, and we only have so much space on disk. So when you bring the spacing down and you increase your resolution, you're going to have better quality, 
but as this indicator tells us, we're going to get uh, a larger file size and memory footprint. Next, let's scroll down and take a look at some of the options in the output turndown. You can see here we have some pretty self-explanatory options like start frame and end frame, but more importantly, in here we have the channels. These are all the channels that we're going to be able to select and output with our cache. Now, by default, we have smoke and fire, and that's great, but in some cases, you might want to add things like temperature or velocity. Those might be important for things like the black body shader, wavelet turbulence, or other effects that we want to base our simulation on. Now, we do have to be concerned with what channels we do add because that will add to the file size of our cache. So that's why the default is maybe just smoke and fire because that's what you might need right out of the box. In this case, we've turned on temperature and that's going to enable us to go down into the voxel display. We'll just turn off GPU display and down here we should be able to see when we say show temperature. Now we can see that temperature show up in our voxel display whereas before we couldn't because it wasn't exported as a channel. This gives you a lot of information to debug and even drive your simulations off of. So we'll just stop that and we'll turn our GPU display back on. Down below channels we have our default cache, our wavelength cache, and our post-processing cache paths. When we open up the cache for the default you can see that uh, we have a file for each frame and they get bigger as the simulation goes on. We can save that out into a particular file folder with a particular name so that we can iterate our simulation options. I'm also going to go into output and I'm going to change the viewport update to every five frames. This will maybe speed the simulation along a bit and that way we won't have to wait as much for the viewport to update. What we can do here is go down to the system turndown and we can set the defaults back to what they were when we started which was vorticity 1 with a vorticity strength of maybe around 0.6. And we can save that out to a different cache file. So here we'll name that FumeFX Intro 02. And we'll simulate again. Now you can see that smoother result coming through in the simulation as we changed our simulation parameters for vorticity. Now we can right click on that button and we can toggle between that first simulation and our second simulation. Any simulations that are in this default path will be able to toggle between quickly. So if we need to iterate our simulations, we can take a look at each cache very easily. I'm just going to go back and we're going to set Vorticity 2 with a size of 0.9. Let's take a quick look at playback. If we have play from set to 0 and play 2 to 30, you can see that we'll only see those 30 frames. You can kind of scrub that back and see. We can also have play from 30 to frame 60, and then you'll see that we start at frame 30 in the cache. We can change our start frame if we want to frame 30, and then that should kind of match up to the play from frame. If we set that play from back to 0 and the play 2 to 60, then what will happen is our simulation will start at frame 30, and it will only play 30 frames. Underneath that we have our auto range types. We can say that before the start frame what we'd like to do is have our simulation cycle. So this will cycle one after another before that start frame. Then after the end frame we can say maybe we want it to ping pong. So that is going to take the cache and it's going to run it back and forth. So right now we're cycling and then as we get past the end frame we're ping ponging back and forth. For certain simulations, this can be a good way to shift your explosions or fire in order to get more mileage and not have to simulate every single one. And you can see if we switch our cache, we'll get the exact same setup with our playback. Let's just set these back to their defaults. So we'll play from 0, start frame 0, and we'll play through 270, which is about what we simulated. 